welcome to a Stepping Stones to Awareness show. This is show part two um, of the British Constitution. And I'm Caroline Stevens. And today in the studios, I've got John Hurst and Fraser Reese. We're going to ask the question, whatever happened to the British Constitution? John has been a policeman for 30 years and now he's left the force. He can speak freely. So, John, over to you. Uh, Whatever uh, happened to the British Constitution? Well, what, what I'm going to tell you is, uh, is a story of uh, deceit and betrayal uh, by the establishment in order to protect themselves. Uh, Who I, I, do you call the establishment? Uh, anybody in a position of um, power, really. Uh, 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 in, in order to, in order to uh, oppress people, uh, uh, a good way to do it is convince them that uh, they're, they're not being oppressed. And oppression, uh, uh, another uh, is best described as tyranny. Tyranny is rule without law. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to argue over the next 10 minutes that uh, we're subject to a tyranny, which is a rule without law, and they got away with it because we didn't know about it. So first I'll talk about what happened to uh, the educational system uh, in relation to this topic. Then I'll talk about the education of lawyers. And then I'll talk about some efforts that have been made to recover this information. Um, uh, and by the end of it, you'll understand that, that we, we do have a constitution um, and where you can find it um, and, and what use of it, it is to you. So, okay. so the, fir the first issue is, is, is um, uh, anybody educated since the late 1970s, uh, uh, whatever their topic, including law, um, will, will not know much about this topic. Um, there used to be O levels and A levels in, in the British constitution and it's perfectly normal and our grandparents um, would have had a, a working knowledge of it. Um, um, in the late, late 1970s, um, probably uh, as a result of uh, joining the European Union, um, any, any, any mention of the Constitution in, in, uh, in, in the formal education system was abolished. Um, because it was abolished, um, the other side was able to get away with breaching it. So was Ofsted, did Ofsted exist then, or was that just uh, uh, the, the, the civil service? Well, the, the previous system is, is, is uh, different uh, um, uh, schools could sign up to different education boards. There'll be Oxford, Cambridge, London and so on. Um, and uh, parents uh, didn't have a uniform national curriculum. They could choose which, which, uh, which syllabus, which education board they wanted to. Some were more religious than others, and uh, parents would have a choice. Not very large, five or six, but uh, certainly Wouldn't what Wouldn't it be enough to the school, though? The, the school would choose which syllabus they'd work to, yeah. and then parents could choose the school is this why we've got such a big issue with this brexit john because um i guess it was um again against the constitution um to join the eu and if we weren't taught about it then i guess that's how they, we've just the, 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 the only the only way title to the kingdom uh, 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 should change hand is by trial by battle and whichever side okay. wins god's on their side that's the common law rule um uh, what was done uh, jurisdiction was changed by sleight of hand um, and the other side have progressively tried to impose th their legal standards on us. Um, our, our common law system uh, is, is based on the presumption of innocence, where the Crown has to prove you've done something wrong. And the continental system, based on the Napoleonic Code, everyone's guilty until they can talk their way out of it. So this is a problem in France. OK, thank you for your clarification. Hence, we're supporting... Yeah. yeah. OK. okay. So, so anyone educated since the 1970s in school won't, won't know about it. Um, uh, if you want to be a lawyer, the first uh, qualification you need is a law degree. I thought you were going to say to lie. Uh, well, yes. The ability yeah, to yeah, lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yes, yeah. Um, the, um, um, uh, I think anybody uh, who looks at it objectively will, will be forced to accept that a university these days um, is, a, is a political indoctrination centre um, and part of the problem. Um, ability to teach. Uh, uh, they're not, the, the subjects they're taught are specially chosen um, and uh, political activism is considered normal and neutrality is a thing of the past. Um, uh, the Could you clarify that? I'm, you're talking to a, somebody who's a qualified teacher, so I'm just intrigued. Well, once the national curriculum comes in and there's a uniform national national uh, syllabus, um, uh, uh, you have to enact. You basically got to carry out yeah. exactly what the prescription is. Yes, that's right. Yes, that, 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 that's my understanding. My, my, <laughs> my, my, my late wife Tina, um, uh, she's a junior level in a school but a teaching assistant she she said that if it's the third thursday of the, of the term we'll be teaching this particular topic every year regardless that's right um, um Could be. and uh, she felt constrained by it because she remembered the previous system she's a similar age group to me um and um uh, uh the, the national curriculum um came in the 90s wasn't it mid 90s something like that and it's 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 allowed it's allow government to impose thought control 
Right, uh, and they can rewrite history as well. Rewrite history, the memory Put a different hole. emphasis on subject, in the yeah, way that, that, subjects That's are right. And, and the <coughs> teachers um, don't know any better. Uh, I, I was sure you're a mature lady and you, you remember the previous system. I understand you went to a grammar school, did you? I did go to grammar yeah, school. Yeah, me, 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 me too. Sorry, John, yeah. this just makes me think, is this the same kind of problem we have with, with, with the police at the minute and the CPS? Is that, is it sort that, of those who control the recruiting the training control what happens, the outcome, don't they? Right, and, and that appears to be what's happened. The last thirty, um, odd, forty uh, years. If you, if you say to the, uh, to the to the, the typical educated person, "Have we got a constitution?" They will think about it. If you say, "Have we got a bill of rights?" What, what are they likely to say? Um, it's American, weren't they? <laughs> yeah, it does have more of an American okay, connotation. Well, but we well, started here, though. It started here. We yeah, are the, the birthplace of common law. Co common law, mm -hmm. and and the Americans are in fact emigres that that, uh, that kept the common law better than we did. So no sales uh, tax in Delaware, first state. Well, that, that, that's, that's one issue. The, well, they've the, kept the faith longer than we have. Well, true. So, so, so cut, cut a long story short, if you want to know what, uh, what the British Constitution is, you have to consult history books. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, 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 fortunately, as a policeman, I had, had access to the Commissioner's Law Library uh, in, in a building called Wellington House around the corner from Scotland Yard. I mean, in my own time, but uh, I was allowed to use it. And, and I dis discovered a lot of material that had been hidden and suppressed. And I... I, I Remembered it because I've got a good memory and I'm now positioned to report. Um, um, in the in the late uh, uh, 19, 1980s, around about 1988, uh, sorry, 1997, <coughs> uh, uh, a situation arose where, whereby a whole group of uh, people in the country, about 20,000, were about to be dispossessed of one of their common law rights. And what I'm referring to is what's known as the Dunblane incident, where uh, a man with a gun held on certificate goes into a school and shoots several people and then kills himself. Um, there was a there was an immediate um, um, uh, outcry, wasn't there? Immediate outcry. Yeah. Uh, and people that held guns on certificate for for, for, for for years were suddenly dispossessed of them. This generated uh, a certain am certain amount of resistance. And didn't it affect the Olympic team as well? It did. Yes. Yeah, what happened yeah. with them? Um, they can only train abroad. They can't train here. So we haven't we haven't. So they could them. train in France, couldn't they? Yes. Yeah. But uh, not here. Well, um, on the subject of the right to bear arms, if you if you if you go to YouTube and look at my video, John Hurst with the U R K B A, right to keep and bear arms, uh, I give an account of this. Now, the interesting thing is that the legislation relating to firearms, um, it doesn't infringe our bill of rights. It doesn't take away the right to bear arms. It's purely Home Office policy. Um, uh, since uh, the 1920s, the Home Office have had a policy of. Um, not wanting the public to be armed uh, in case we revolt, in case we go communist. Uh, uh, that was a threat in the 1920s. Russia had turned communist. Um, uh, and uh, that policy is main, main, maintained to the, to the present day. Uh, it was challenged last year by a man called uh, Graham Moore, um, unsuccessfully due to lack of funds mainly. Um, so as far as the Constitution is concerned, uh, um, you have to ask yourself what sort of regime you want to live in. Um, Democracy is a term that's used about the United Kingdom, isn't it? Um, uh, but a democracy is, is where a majority, say 52%, uh, uh, are able to impose their will on the other 48. And do you feel safe living in such a situation? Ooh. Yeah, you don't. So, so on the other hand, what we are, what, what we are and what we should maintain is a constitutional monarchy where the sovereign has certain things they can't do. In our case, there are 13 articles in our Bill of Rights which, uh, which are prohibitions. For example, the king can't, uh, can't impose um, cruel and unusual punishments. The, mm. the, the king, or king or queen must uh, arrange jury trial. Um, any taxes raised must be for the specific purpose and not kept any longer than necessary, and so on. There are 13 articles. But you said so us. Sorry. Sorry. Um, you said about the 52% and the 48%, which yeah. you are referring to the Brexit. Brexit, yes, that's right. Yeah. But then... We were taken in without. It, it, I, I, I take your point. What you're saying is, is, it, is it fair for we the 52 to impose it on the 48? That's that's a, that's a different case because uh, uh, joining the uh, EU was unlawful because we've given away sovereignty. Uh, the Queen gets the job uh, on the authority of, uh, of of Parliament and the Common Law, um, and she can't give it away to somebody else because it's Parliament decides who sh who should be. Um, so so um, the history of what happened to, uh, in in 1992 is this. Um, uh, cost, cost, uh, the um, Mr Heath was the Prime Minister as you know very dubious character um, and um, uh, for those who want to research it you, if you look into the uh, allegations against Mr Heath they're, they're quite horrific um, it appears he was an agent of a foreign power 
uh, okay. Germany. He was subject to blackmail by them. Um, and uh, the common law rule about a contract is a uh, contract or a treaty is that uh, both sides have to disclose fully what's going on. And if one side has been subverted, then that contract is obtained by fraud and it's, and it's void. Mm. So we're not really in the EU because um, oh, it's fraudulent yes. contract. Yes. Yes. That's the way so why are, we, why are we going through this pantomime um, in the mainstream media? Well, you've, you've had Mr. Shrimpton in, in this chair, haven't you? And uh, he, 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 he did a speaking tour around the south of England about 20 years ago, and I went to it, and it, it was part of my waking up process. Fair play to him. Um, and and uh, um, it is a pantomime. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, and, and in actual fact, the... the, the uh, the Miller case in the, in the Supreme Court is, is a, quite an important uh, thing. The Gina Miller case of 2017. That's right, that's right. Now, if you were to, were to fire up your, your browser and look for the Supreme Court Miller case, what you'll find is, if you go to paragraph, 40, paragraph 44, it will say, ever since the Bill of Rights 1689, the Crown has had no power to suspend the law. The Crown has had no power to suspend the, the law. The law. And what that refers to is, <coughs> is that um, if you're going to have a, uh, a, a king who's got divine right to do what he wants, or Queen. Or Queen. That, me that means they can say, I I'll ignore that law. So Henry VIII could cut people's heads off, for example. Which is why you've got the, the 13 um, protectory for the people, as it were, but from the, the from from a tyrannical um, reign, from a from for yeah. example Henry so, VIII. So so what happened in 1688? We have a revolution. The revolution is is a fight. Uh, there was a battle at Reading, about 100 people were killed, mainly, mainly um, uh, the baddies, James II's supporters. Um, he wanted to turn the Catholic, uh, the country Catholic, the population objected, they fought him to a standstill. Um, he, he, he fled to France, uh, as, as he fled he, he, he chucked the Great Seal of England into the River Thames. He chucked what into the... The Great Seal of England, his badge of office. What's that then? Well, in the old days king, king and kings didn't need to write because they had people to do that for them. Um, uh, they were far too grand, so, but they had a seal. But could they read what people had they written for could. them? They probably could. They probably could, but uh, the because you could write any old thing, couldn't yeah, you? Yeah. Well, the, the Great Seal of England was was like a a, a, um, uh, a personal to the king. It was supposed to be the guarantee. You if you look at old charters, that, you? uh, you'll find a, a large brass, a large wax circle being stamped with a seal. Is that where you get the signet ring from? A signet, ring, signet ring was a small example. So, 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 so as far as the Constitution is concerned, if you want to research it, um, have you heard of the American Declaration of Independence? Yes. Well, it's kept in a um, in a elaborate museum. It, it, it's, um, <coughs> it's is that it in Pennsylvania? It, it, no, it, it, my understanding is it, it's in Washington, and it's a device like the TARDIS. Do you remember the TARDIS from Doctor Who? There's a there's a circular glass display case with this thing in, and because it's so valuable, it, it lowers below the ground and, it, and doors seal overnight. Oh, yes. That's right. And it's a great. It's a precious and revered object, and ch school children are taken to read it. Uh, now, our equivalent is uh, de the Declaration of Rights was obtained um, uh, uh, after uh, after the Battle of Reading and after after James II had fled, um, and his daughter stood to come onto the throne. And in order to stop her becoming tyrannical, a new revolutionary settlement, a new agreement was required, and that was recorded in the Declaration of Rights. What happened was um, and when was the Battle of Reading? Uh, uh, 1688. Right, which is when it... The Just before, earlier yeah. in the year. So, yeah, um, uh, You have to bear in mind uh, that period, the, uh, the, the current calendar that we have uh, didn't apply. The, the year changed in March, in actual fact. So, 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 um, so, so um, uh, 1688 began in March, 16, 16, 1687. Okay. And it's the origin of the financial year. The financial year is April, but the reason is that there's slight variation in different years. Um, so... Um, we have a fight, we have a fair fight, uh, 100 people are killed, um, uh, James, James II surrenders by fleeing to France um, and the population get together and they can't form a parliament because a parliament is the lords and the commons and the, and the king or queen to give royal assent. King's done a bunk to France, what should we do? Um, our, sh our shrewd uh, ancestors knew that the final parliament, James II, had been stuffed with what we now call cronies, placemen. Uh, 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 a bit like the House of Lords today, Yeah, yeah exactly. Yes, that's right. Yes, nothing changes. History repeats yeah, itself. Indeed. Um, so what, what they did was they, they, um, they, they went back a stage and they called the previous parliament. There were four-year parliaments then. They called the members of the previous one before it all went horribly wrong. Those are still alive. It's not, um, and they had what's called a constitutional convention which is what it says on the tin. Now, they discuss the constitution. The definition of constitution is the, 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 the law which governs the relations between the state and, and the people. Okay, um, um, a, a classic example is, is that, um, um, let's imagine uh, Germany in the, in the early 30s. Hitler's come to power um, <coughs> and he starts building concentration camps <coughs> and people are being killed in concentration camps. Yeah. But it was lawful because there was an act of the Reichstag says 
act to write song um, <coughs> we, you can have a concentration camp you can be a garden if people get killed it's not a crime great actually yeah uh, uh, um, uh, like in, in, in this country that could never happen because murder is a common law offence um, um, and the coronation oath uh, uh, says that the, 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 the king or queen will rule, rule according to the laws the customs and the statutes agreed on which means he or she can never, gi never give royal assent to an act of parliament which authorises breaching the law and, and making murder legal for example but how come we were allowed to give away our uh, country to Brussels well we, we, we weren't it was never lawful it was, it was just bluff and it was got away with um, the hidden history of that is that, is that um, the, the Crown's Principal Law Officer, and this happened this very week, um, uh, the, the Attorney General gave an advice to, legal advice to the uh, Prime Minister and she decided to hide it. You're aware, aren't you? Yes. Exactly the same thing happened but in But it still hasn't. It still hasn't been well, well, released I, I, yet. I, has I, it? I, haven't, I haven't. I haven't <laughs> gone online today, so I'm a little bit behind. Um, uh, 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 Lord Kilmuir, uh, uh, is 1960. The, yeah, that, that, that's right. Um, gives an opinion to Mr. Heath, uh, and Mr. Heath hides it. Now, unfortunately for Mr. Heath, um, uh, the, the advice was put in state papers, and state papers by convention are kept secret for 30 years, but they were released about 10 years ago, um, and uh, truth researchers have found them and, uh, and, and spilled the beans. Um, it was only revealed in the mainstream media, though, last uh, a year ago. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's right, because the mainstream media are behind, behind aren't they? And, and, and they, only, they only reveal stuff when, when forced. Um, um, for those of you who read the mainstream media anymore, well, it's a waste of time unless you read the comments pages. Um, uh, because the comments pages are the truth. <laughs> <Generally> <laughs> speaking. That's why they stop, they stop accepting comments exactly, on that, some that, of that, these that, articles. That, 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 that's the reason. So what I'm saying is, is that um, um, we've got a document that came about as a revolution in 1688. It's called the Declaration of Rights. Um, and in 1997, um, uh, there was no public available translation, no, no copy. It's not a translation because it's in Old English, but there was no, the text was not available. So compass, contrast the Americans, it's a revered document, children taught about it, here, hidden away. It was actually in the, uh, the House of Lords Library, but nobody had a transcript. Um, and uh, I was doing legal research. I had to keep it low profile because I was a policeman. So a friend of mine by the name of John Bingley, uh, a, 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 a grieved pistol owner, um, uh, decided to go to the House of Parliament and photograph it. Um, and I've got a document in front of me, which is a book that he wrote at the time. Um, and for those, you see the camera? Um, Declaration of, Declaration of uh, Rights and Bill of Rights are there. Um, he photographed it skin by skin, because it's, it's parchments, um, and he transcribed it. And he also entered, entered into correspondence with the government, government of the day. Um, uh, and he was able to secure con con confessions from uh, Mr Blair refused to answer, he delegated to Mr Straw, uh, that uh, yes, uh, uh, no Prime Minister would, um, would uh, encourage Her Majesty to give consent to an Act of Parliament which breached the Declaration. Um, and that's where it stands. Um, in this book, which John Bingley is uh, quite a scholar, has produced, it's got photographs of line by line and the transcript. Now, if that document has been occult, hidden, for the last 20 years, um, why haven't lawyers done something about it? A massive conspiracy. OK, well, the reason is that um, uh, 20 years ago, when I discovered this stuff, um, myself, uh, John Bingley, and um, uh, uh, I'm not, I can't quite remember if John Bingley was with me, certainly a friend of mine, uh, Mike Burke, uh, we consulted a Queen's Council, a man called Leland Price, uh, then, then you know, like, uh, getting on in years, um, and uh, we write, a re write up out the result of our researches and uh, submit it to him. And we go and see him in the, uh, the, the temple, the, the legal quarter in London. And it's like going back 300 years, if you've ever been there. Um, and um, he had a, it, was like, it was like Hogwarts, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he's got half rim glasses. And uh, he, uh, he, uh, he finds our document and literally blew the dust off it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, and he said uh, if you're my students you'd have passed well down and I was quite gratified because I'm a humble policeman and uh, uh, um, you, you know not, not a lawyer um, and uh, he said you're yeah, quite right of course this is all hidden and he, it's he who told us this, this vital piece of information um, lawyers have a syllabus to study it's called the legal education syllabus and, and he, he said I'm a professor of law at St Anthony's College Oxford and I can tell you uh, you would have passed I was gra grateful about that um, uh, Anything to do with the Constitution has been excluded from the legal education syllabus. So I'll say that again. Anything to do with the Constitution is excluded from the legal education syllabus, which means a lazy lawyer needn't study it. And because he hasn't asked any exam questions on it, he's not qualified on it either. 
So you've got generation of lawyers from that point onwards that know nothing about this. Um, um, and uh, uh, if, they, if they purport to tell you uh, any, any, any form of legal advice, they're, they're fraud because um, they're not qualified. They've never been asked, asked questions. Hmm. The common law rule is that man may not sit in judgment in his own cause. So if you say to a lawyer, are you qualified under the Constitution? And he tries to say yes. He's telling you lies because nobody's tested him. He's, he's giving his opinion that he's qualified. You see, see that so concept? they chose not to test them on it specifically yeah. so they wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't be. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's right. Now, um, a quick way to learn about the Constitution and the, and the revolution that I've talked about is to, is to go to the BBC, probably accidentally. Um, about a year ago, uh, a, a historian called Lucy Worsley um, uh, produced a, a video called History's Greatest Fibs, Part 2. So if you look at the BBC video online, um, it's on YouTube, not, you don't have to go to iPad and pay the, pay the licence fee. Um, uh, Lucy Worsley explains what's gone on. She explains what happened in the, in the Glorious Revolution. Um, uh, she interviews various people about the uh, Declaration of Rights. Um, and um, uh, she then goes on to talk to scholars as to what happened about how it was hidden. And basically say it was Marxist scholars decided to hide the stuff. In, uh, in the late 1970s. Now, the significance of this declaration is that it's a, it, it's a job specification contract for, for uh, every Crown Serve from that point onwards. There are 13 articles. Uh, I've mentioned some of them already. Article 3 says um, ecclesiastical courts are illegal, and that will ban Sharia courts because it's ecclesiastical, isn't it? doesn't have to be Christian. Sharia too. courts? Yeah, ecclesiastical <laughs> courts are, are... So they're illegal? Yes. Right, yeah. and we've got, what, 85 of them in exactly. the country? Yes, that's right, yeah. And Theresa May embraces them, presumably? Yes. Yeah. I mean, right, OK. So uh, anybody listening out there, this is the state of play in the UK today. Yeah. Uh, our politicians are criminals. Lies. Criminals. Sorry, criminals. Yeah. Well, uh, they, they take an oath of office. Uh, the Bill of Rights actually contains the, uh, the uh, oath of allegiance. Um, um, and um, uh, I'll just tell, tell you what the history of the Bill of Rights is. Uh, the Declaration of Rights is a, is a constitutional settlement obtained at sword point. Uh, but that wasn't duress. Why at sword point? Because because there was a battle in Reading. Trial by battle. Trial by battle. It, the, the the religious concept is uh, whichever side wins, God was clearly on their side. Okay. We better take back control. Yeah, than yeah we? exactly. So we've done a, a talk about law for rebellion, but that, that is it's related to it. Um, so so um, uh, if you watch Lucy Worsley's video, what 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 you'll see is that um, um, MPs are ignorant of this. I went to saw my one last year. We had a new one, and he, he had no knowledge. Uh, uh, on the video, you'll see, um, if you picture the, uh, you've been to Parliament, I dare say, you've been to the Central Lobby. Yeah. You picture the corridor going to the Lords, corridor going to the Commons. Um, the large murals on the corridor going into, going into the Commons, the first one is the Declaration of Rights being read out by the Clerk of the House of Lords to William and Mary. So every time an MP enters Parliament, he's passing a, an image that was intended to teach him about it. Hmm. And how many know? He also, <laughs> supposedly, on the outside of Parliament, there's the Lord's Prayer. Yes, well, that's right. That's right. The, 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 I'll just tell you the history of the, what, what happened to the Declaration of Rights. It couldn't be an act of Parliament because it was produced by a constitutional convention. Um, a Parliament requires Lords, Commons and King to be present. Um, William and Mary are, are presented with the document and they agree to it. Mary, Mary is in line to the throne. Um, William is her husband. In those days, women were property. So, so, so she didn't want to rule without him and he, he wouldn't let her rule without <laughs> so, so they both got the job. It's the only time we've had a dual, dual monarchy. Um, and um, the next day, and it happens to be the next year, 1689, because um, uh, the calendar tick clicked over, um, the, the, uh, the, first, the first proper parliament uh, passes an act. It's called the Crown and Parliament Recognition Act 1689. And what the Crown and Parliament Recognition Act does, it says the deliberations of the Constitutional Convention are to be given the force of an act of parliament. So the Bill of Rights is an act of parliament, uh, but the wording is what's in the Declaration of Rights. And if you compare the Declaration of Rights, which you'll find very, very hard to do unless you get John Bungie's book, because as I say, it's occult knowledge is hidden, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll find that the Bill of Rights tells what happened. Um, when you interpret an act of parliament, you, um, you, you read the whole thing. Um, you've got the short title, which tells you what it's about. Bill means list, list of rights. Um, and then it says an act settling succession to the crown and declaring the rights and liberties of the subject. And then it says there was a meeting in, in February, 20, February, February 1688 and the people got together as their ancestors had done. And what, that's, what, that, what that is, is it's a reference to um, uh, uh, the, the last time or the previous time this happened, which is 1215 and Magna Carta. 
So, so it is the foundation stone, really, isn't it? It is, yes, yeah. Um, and, 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 and we do, <coughs> I mean, so basically, we do have a British constitution. There's just a bits and pieces, Well, not all in one place. Well, and now here's the insight. Now, if, um, there's a hierarchy of legal textbooks. And you remember, it's, it's, uh, as a policeman, I've got access to the Commissioner's Law Library. The library, Commissioner's yeah. Law Library. Commissioners. There's a hierarchy of textbooks. Top of the food chain is Halsbury's Laws of England. Uh, Lord Halsbury was a, a, an eminent lawyer, and he set up a publishing camp. So, so the textbook goes, Magistrates Court, Stone's Justice Manual. Uh, Crown Courts, Archbold's Criminal Pleading. Um, higher Courts, Court of Appeal, all the way up to the House of Lords and the Supreme Court. Housery's Laws of England, okay? Um, 34 chapters. Uh, You've uh, read it all? Not all. <laughs> um, there's a chapter on constitutional law, and it begins with this. It says, um, in the absence of a single codification of our constitution, our constitution consists of Magna Carta, Act of Settlement, Petition of Rights 1620, it goes through a whole list. So when it says, in the absence of a single constitutional document, we go back to what went previously but what what john bingley and i have discovered is that we do have a single constitutional document it's called the declaration of rights it's it's something something that's been hidden you know uh, 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 for whatever well, that's reason just worth, can i just clarify yeah. so we do have a single a codified single constitution. codified yeah. constitution which is called the declaration of rights declaration of rights yes that, 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 that's that's right um and um i was talking to somebody in the libertarian party and yeah. they they didn't believe we had well sean, a... sean gabb in the libertarian party actually started me on on this road i'm a big fan of sean gabb and he wrote a paper about the right to bear arms and he introduced it to, to me to the concept of, of well, it's uh, the defense isn't it yeah. yeah i think that's actually thinking about yeah. it i think uh with the what's coming ahead i think we do need to be able to defend our well that's, a, that's a ne next topic we'll talk about that so 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 we we haven't got a codified codified document it's no good asking a mainstream lawyer because they they're not qualified they, have been taught. <laughs> they, have, they, they may have, they may have read about the constitution but they're not they, they can't give a legal it. opinion about it because they've never been tested mm. because the common law rule is a man may not sit in judgment of his own court the cause um, and and uh, we live in the age of internet um, and large numbers of people particularly millennials out there um, you need to know this you need to know this because you remember I talked about two ways to run a country democracy where a majority can impress a minority mm -hmm. or a constitutional monarchy where the crown's powers are limited and there are certain things they can't do they can't suspend the law and have you murdered they can't tax you Those excessively the they can't things you're talking about, punish, yes. you, punish you unreasonably <laughs> they can't allow Sharia courts uh, uh, and, and I think that's that's the time has come for this to be uh, to be made more widely known. I understand John Bingley is coming people. next week. He is, um, yeah. Uh, uh, John this, is, this is a substantial volume. So there's the front page, the uh, the, the declaration and the bill. The declaration is what the, con the convention produced, and and the Crown of Parliament Recognition Act 1689 made it an act of Parliament. Um, and there's the oath. Now the oath is a coronation oath from 1688. Um, and there are three parts in the coronation oath. The first bit is is the key, the, the Archbishop of Canterbury says to the candidate, um, uh, uh, she asks a series of questions. Now, if you were to go on on uh, YouTube and go to Pathé News Coronation of Queen Elizabeth II, you can see it on video. The first thing that happens is the uh, the, the estates of the realm, the Lords and the Commons, are assembled in, in Westminster Abbey, yeah. um, and the Queen comes in a plain gown uh, with a huge flowing train with half a dozen. 1950s beauties, <laughs> uh, like yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> After the show. No, it's in, it's in, uh, 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 that's right. Um, she's she's introduced to the uh, to the four corners of the uh, 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 the king uh, the uh, uh, the building, and the Archbishop of Canterbury uh, turns to the audience and he says, "Gentlemen, will you have this lady as your sovereign?" Gentlemen, you have the sovereign, and as, she, as the archer was using her word, she curtsies, and that acknowledges that the uh, uh, um, appointment of a king is an election. Right. They're, 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 she's elected, um, and uh, the the gentlemen all, all say yes, like by her Queen Elizabeth. Um, and then, if you continue to watch the video, you'll find over the next five or ten minutes, she's given the regalia of state, which is the orb and the scepter and that sort of thing, and the sword of justice. Um, and and everything that's done there is a contract. And the contra the physical embodiment of the contract that shines is the is the coronation oath. So the first part of the coronation oath is read out line by line with by the um, the um, uh, archbishop. Is will you rule the kingdom according to its laws and customs? Okay. Um, and what that means is you can't give an assent to an act of parliament. Uh, which breaches the laws and customs. So Parliament has no power to abolish itself. 
Parliament has no power to alter the com common law because the Queen promised she wouldn't. <laughs> the second part of the coronation is, will you exercise mercy in your judgments? And what that refers to is, is for example, British police, when I was taught 40 years ago, um, discretion. So if you stop a motorist and he's Mr. Respect when he's got a bit flustered and gone through a red light, you, 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 it's very unlikely he's going to get a ticket, isn't it? If you stop him and he says something rude about policemen's parentage, <laughs> he's quite likely to get a ticket. Right. Uh, and that was, that was, that was coronation, that, current, that's the middle part. Right. And the third part is, is, is the religious, religious bit. Uh, the moderator of the Church of Scotland uh, gives the Queen a Bible, and as he does so, he says, here's the most valuable thing the earth provides, because of the knowledge in the Bible, not the gold on the cover. Um, and um, what, what that does is the Queen is a professional religious person, um, and she's expected to maintain the Church of England. Mm, uh, she read it recently. Well, there we are. Anyway, thank so you, you think... so much for that then, John, because the, basically the answer to the question is yes, we do have a British constitution. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So thank you, John, yeah. and uh, for joining us. Thank you. <laughs> and you. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> it's nice to be here and be educated. <laughs> there we are. Yes. And, uh, yeah, you've got a classroom of two here. Well, 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 I, I was thinking the, they were so glamorous, those ladies, pushing, and I was, it just reminded me of uh, Caroline. Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's, it's very much a compliment. You're going to get hit later. Very much a compliment, John. Oh, what's oh, my defence going to be? You've been so cheeky. Uh, yeah, uh, well, well, of course, a lady could slap a man and a man couldn't hit a woman. That, that's where it comes from. A gentleman would never, never strike a man. That's fair body. enough. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you, John Hurst yeah. and Fraser Reese for yeah, yeah, coming yeah, yeah. on to the show. And this is part two of the constitutional uh, series, and there will be more to come. So, thanks to everybody at home for listening, and uh, look forward to seeing you again for part three. Take care and goodbye for now.